What's up everybody, Johnny Yu here. Today's video is pretty wild. When you don't listen to the police, it could end real bad for you, especially if you don't show them your hands, especially if you're moving around like this and not complying with the officers. So let's watch what happens. Let's go. What are you doing? St what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, do not move. Do not move. Do not move. What are you doing? Hey. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! 266, give me another, I got one at gunpoint. Nissan dealership 29. Get out of the car! 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 I need an 18. Show me your hands! Get on the ground! Go to my patrol vehicle. What are you doing? St what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, do not move! Do not move! Okay, right off the bat, using your weapon mount as light for light is pretty wild. <laughs> I mean, he's literally pointing his gun while using his flashlight. I don't know if he meant to do that. Maybe he did. But it turns out that this guy's already in the truck and is in the Nissan dealership up to no good. So maybe it is warranted that the officer points the gun at this guy in the truck, but also wanting to use his flashlight. Do not move. What are you doing? Hey! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! 266, give me another. I got one at gunpoint. Well, you had him at gunpoint way before that. And so as you guys saw, he was giving the guy commands to get out of the car, get out of the car. Officer opens the car door and the guy doesn't get out. He tries to get back in and close the door. Obviously, the guy looks scared, but also he's up to no good, which is why the officer called for backup and held him at gunpoint even more. <laughs> Nissan dealership 29. Get out of the Now, here's what I don't get, okay? The officer does a good job at giving the guy commands. He's not coming out of the car, and the guy in the car is not saying anything to the officer. We also see the door close once again while the officer is backtracking and pointing his gun at him. And so in that moment, I'm thinking, okay, the guy's in the truck. He's not getting out of the truck, and he's not showing us his hands. The guy in the truck may have a knife, or a gun or something that might harm the officer. And you can see for a sec there, the weapon mounted light turned off. And that, I mean, could be really bad news for the officer because at some point, the guy in the truck could turn around and just pop a couple rounds at the officer. It also is weird to see that he changes from lethal to non-lethal, meaning he puts away his his Glock, and, and then brings out his taser. Now, maybe in that moment he saw that there was nothing in the truck, but you can't really identify anything in that truck because there's no light. And you can't really say for certain that there's no guns or weapons that the guy in the truck might use to harm the officer. So switching from lethal to non-lethal, kind of iffy on that one. And the guy in the truck is not listening to commands. He's not saying anything and he's being very, very sketchy. So that tells me I'm going to leave my lethal out until I know that he's out of the truck or there's nothing in the truck that's going to harm me as the officer. And it looks like there he tried using his baton to potentially break the window uh, open in, in the car. Again, you're going from lethal to non-lethal to almost very, very non-lethal, like a baton is going to have a hard time breaking that window. And so he backs up. He says, get out of the car, get out of the car. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Show me your hands! Hey! Get on the ground! I need an 18. 
Show me your hands! And there we go. The officer does this smart thing and takes out his lethal and gets covered behind this white car. Now he's doing this because what have we learned about the guy in the truck? He doesn't comply, doesn't say anything, is very sketchy, not showing us his hands and not getting out of the car. And when the door opens, he goes back into the car and we don't know what's going on in that truck, in that car, in his hands. So there's a lot of reasons why the officer did a good thing there, stepped back, brought his lethal out and just covered behind the car and held cover on the truck while still giving commands to the guy in the truck to get out of the freaking truck. But here's the kicker. The guy in the truck doesn't stay in the truck. He gets out the other side. He starts running towards the patrol car of the police officer. Now, I bet you $10, you'd probably guess what happens next. Get on the ground! Go on my patrol vehicle. And people are going to be like, well, why did the officers shoot him? Why why couldn't he have talked him down or like talked to him in, in a good manner where he can come down from this episode? Guys, it doesn't work like that. Okay, from all that we've known so far, this guy is not compliant, potentially very dangerous. The guy gets out of the truck, runs to the patrol car, and guess what's in the patrol car? Well, first of all, it's another vehicle he's trying to get into, potentially run over the police officer. And number two, there are weapons and guns in that patrol car. And the last thing that the officer needs is that guy running into his patrol car, grabbing his rifle or shotgun or any other gun and using those guns on the police officer. Now the police officer knew that potentially this guy might want to be getting the guns from the vehicle. And notice how the guy didn't go into the driver's seat, he went into the passenger seat. So even more so of potentially this guy might want to grab the long guns and use it against the officer. In my opinion, this police officer did everything correct. He assessed the situation little by little and he reacted accordingly. Now, could it have been a lot worse in the beginning with a trunk in the car, him not getting out? Potentially. But as it progressed, I do think the police officer did a very good job in concealing cover and trying to pin down where he was and eventually saw him run towards his patrol car, which then turns out, yeah, you have to put that guy down because he's entering your patrol car, which is just, it's a no-go, guys. And those are the kind of things that police have to encounter every single day and night, those little decisions that make a big impact. But I would like to know from you guys, would you do the same thing? Was this police officer right to do so? Do you think he could have de-escalated a lot quicker Comment down below. As always, guys, thanks so much for the support, and I'll catch you in the next Johnny Q video. Peace.